Hi again, everyone. Um, this is Creative Coding DIY Webcam Filters. Uh, for this section, we'll be looking at how to use a webcam as a source in Hydra and also how to combine and layer multiple sources and outputs. Um, so here you can see the code for what is going on on the screen and this is what we're going to learn how to do right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and clear everything off the screen. Again, I'm in Hydra editor at hydra.ojack.xyz. Um, and so uh, before we looked at how you could use an oscillator, create an oscillator, connect it to the output. I ran the code running control shift enter. I could also run the code using this top triangle um, and that we could change the parameters of this oscillator using the numbers in parentheses. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to use a webcam as an input. Um, so for external input such as a webcam, a screen capture, um, or a video or image source, uh, we have several kind of slots for inputting video and those slots have the names S0, S1, S2, S3 for source zero, source one, source two, source three. Um, this will make more sense in a little bit, but let's say I want to um, start my webcam in source zero. So I can do s0 dot init cam. And um, I, I press control shift enter and um, you might see that nothing happened, except um, you can't see this, but the light on my webcam turned on. So um, that's because I started this camera, but I'm still um, I'm still using this oscillator code to render to the screen. Um, but if I want to actually see the camera, I could use a different command called source. Um, I do source s0 dot out. I run the code again, and that, there, um, there we are. Um, and now I can do the same things I was doing before with the oscillator. For example, I could uh, repeat. We could um, change the colors. Um, we could um, do a, we could start to rotate, we could um, do a kaleidoscope, and then we get all these things. Um, and so any of the transformations that worked on the oscillator that we saw last time in the documentation um, could also work here uh, with, with the webcam. Um, there's several other sources that you can use in Hydra. Um, you can also use a screen share. And so um, if you do init screen, instead of a knit cam, this window will pop up and it lets you select a source. Um, and so there you can see the video I was using earlier. So I could use my entire desktop as a source, um, or I could use this um, uh, kind of sky video that I downloaded um, and, and play with that. Um, you can also use uh, videos directly within Hydra, images or a canvas element from another web sketch, or um, P5.js sketches, which is a creative, a different creative coding framework that you can use on the web. So those can all be um, sources in Hydra. Um, you can also use, if someone else is connected with Hydra, you can use um, 
what they're the visuals that they're creating as a source. Um, so I'm going to go back to the camera. And um, so what happens, what if I have various sources or visuals that I'm generating in Hydra and I want to combine those two things together? Um, so um, first I'm going to show, uh, we can create multiple different images in Hydra at the same time. Um, and so right now we're only seeing one thing on the screen, but we can actually have multiple different sources and outputs at the same time. And if I want to see all the different outputs at once, um, then I could use this command uh, render. And run. And so now what happened? This, the top square got smaller. Um, and so What's actually happening here is that I have four different screens or four different outputs um, and they're virtual outputs. Um, I have four different outputs, but right now I can only see one of them. And so I mentioned earlier that the sources have names like S0, S1, S2. Um, the outputs have names like uh, O0, O1. Two. Yeah, I'll just put this. Um, when I put these two slashes here, that is a comment. So that means that's a note sort of for humans and the computer will actually ignore that line of code. So sources can be called um, S0, S1, S2, S3, and outputs have the names O zero, O one, O two, O three, and so that means that when I uh, want to use a source here, um, when I say s zero dot init cam, what I'm doing is saying take this output slot s zero and connect a camera to it. Um, and so same with when I say init screen, I'm saying take this camera slot and um, connect a screen to this slot. Um, and so uh, what I can also do is specify which output I want to um, render an image to. Um, by render, I just mean show an image. Um, so here, when I have dot out, it's actually the same as if I were to say um, out O0. And so let's say, um, I want to render something um, to O1, so then I could say out O1. Um, and so here I'm start activating the camera. Um, I am uh, using the camera as a source, rotating it, repeating it, and changing the colors and I'm sending it out to O2. And then in this line, I'm um, creating an oscillator and I'm sending it out to O1. Um, and let's say I uh, only want to see O1, for example. Um, inside parentheses for render, I could just push O1 or run O1, and so now I only see um, O1. I could uh, only show O0, and um, by putting O0 in parentheses. When, if you wanted to make visuals live, um, which is something I haven't mentioned yet, but people often use Hydra for live coding or sort of live audio-visual performances. Um, and this is one of many sort of useful things uh, if you wanted to say in the middle of a live performance or recording a video change between two things, you could um, change the output here and I could uh, change between two different um, images. 
And again, if I have nothing in parentheses with the command render, then um, I can see all four of these outputs. Um, So now that we have these two images here, I want to go into how can we start to blend or combine the two different images. Um, and maybe I'm actually going to just simplify this code a little bit. So let's go there. Okay. Um, and also once I've initialized the camera, I can actually get rid of this. Um, and just a side note, when um, it doesn't matter what you have on the screen in terms of what the computer will show. It only matters what, how many times you've pressed render or run control shift enter because when you press um, the triangle or you run control shift enter, it's like you're sort of sending whatever's on the screen, those instructions to the computer and whatever was the computer remembers whatever commands you've made before. Um, so if I, for example, delete this code, I'm gonna copy it just in case, I delete this code, I run control shift enter again, nothing happens because I haven't actually told the computer something new. So um, if I wanted to get rid of one of the things that were here, I would actually have to write new code. So I'd have to say solid.out, for example, is a way to get a black screen. Um, and I'll send it to O0. So now I no longer have anything um, on the screen. Uh, so I just use the back button to actually go back to what was there before. Um, so I have these two things. I have my camera. I'm going to get rid of this code because once the camera is initialized, I don't have to worry about it anymore. I have these two uh, sort of images. And what if I want to combine them into one? And um, this is one way of sort of filtering an image or um, taking a live image and putting it in a different space. Earlier, I wanted to be um, in a galaxy, so I was like, oh, I'm going to overlay a galaxy. Um, so, uh, um, in order to blend these two images that we have here together, uh, what I'm going to do is I can use um, this image, which is the webcam repeated as a source, and blend it with this, which is um, sort of a gradient. And so I'm taking O0 and blending it with O1 and sending it out to O2. Um, and so now we see a combination of these two things. If I change one of them, so if I change one of them, um, it changes what happens over here. Go change. And um, you'll see that after, after the first parameter of blend, uh, we can change other parameters of how much blending is happening. So if I put zero here, um, basically what I'm saying is start with O0, which is this screen over here. I'm gonna actually get rid of the repeat just to maybe make it. So I'm saying start with this and blend it with this, but the amount to blend in this case is zero. So it ends up staying with the initial image and send it out to O2. So again, this is O0, this is O1, and this is O2. And here I'm saying, take this uh, video, blend it with this, and send it out to this way. Um, if I put one here, I will only see the second video. 
If I put something in between, I see something in between, but I can change sort of how much I want to see of what's in between. So go ahead if you haven't yet and try try this out. Um, go ahead and play around with that. Um, there's so when I'm blending things, I'm sort of combining the colors of two different images, and it's actually taking the average of the colors. Um, and I'll I'll go more into that in a little bit. But um, there's other ways of combining the colors. So in addition to blend, there's um, some other commands, for example, one of these is diff. Um, and I'm just going to take out the second parameter. And so here what I'm doing is, um, again, combining these two things together, but uh, the way that the colors are being combined is different than if I was just straight blending them, which would be an average. So blend is like this. Uh, this. Um, and one of the things that um, I like about this way of programming is some some kinds of programming you will um, have to write a whole bunch of code, plan a lot ahead of time compile the code, wait for it to compile, wait for it to run, and then maybe an error happens or you find out something isn't working. And with this way of code, it's really, um, you immediately see the result. And I think to me, that's an important part of my creative process is um, trying something, seeing what happens, um, trying something else, seeing what happens, trying something else, and sort of having this space to explore. There's no really right thing to do or wrong thing to do. So already I have this kind of cool um, little filter on my camera. Um, and uh, there's a few other, uh, a few um, other different blending modes, they're often called in other applications as well. For example, um, multiply, um, multiplies the colors together, which um, I'll go into a little bit more later. Um, so I'm going to go back to diff. And in Hydra, again, if you go to the documentation, so with the, um, the complete list of functions. Um, and there's a, uh, um, a, I believe it's here actually, yes. And in operators, which is a little confusing a name, but that's basically the different blend modes. Um, and so here we can see the different modes for combining the colors of two different sources. Now, there's another way of combining two different sources together um, that instead of combining the colors is sort of using the um, colors of one image to affect the geometry of another image or moving image. Um, and so here I'm going to make this oscillator a little bit, um, have a little bit more lines. So um, what I can do is instead of combining the colors of these two images, I can use the colors of this to affect the geometry of this. And so what I'll do here is I'll say modulate. And what I end up with is this sort of warp effect. And this can be fun to explore, especially, um, I'm gonna make, make just this bigger, but I can, um, I can uh, change the number, the oscillator here, or I could rotate it and um, pixelate. And I start to get a, these different distortion effects. 
Let me show what's happening. So right now I'm using this to change the coordinates of this. So that's about it for the basics in terms of blending and also modulating, which is using the, the colors of one thing to affect the coordinates of another thing. I wanted to show um, another thing here, which is that right now we're rendering different things to different outputs, but also it's possible in Hydra, you don't need to um, render everything or show it on the screen. You could also do everything in one. So I'm gonna actually just start, start again to show this. So let's say, um, I already have the camera initialized, so I don't need to reinitialize it, but um, I have, here I have the camera. Um, and then what I can do is directly after the camera, I could say, um, um, use an oscillator to modulate it. So here I have um, this oscillator, or let's say I want a little bit more. The second parameter is uh, of modulate is how much does the image get displaced or warped. Um, so if I do one, gets a lot more warped. The default for this is 0 0.1. Um, and so I'm getting this sort of warpy effect. Um, and now you might be wondering, the image I started with, which was my face overlaid over a, um, a night sky or galaxy. And so we can now uh, do that building on what we just saw. So um, here I had a zero dot and it cam is how I initialize the camera. So the camera is a source called S0. I could create another source called S1 and do init screen. And so now um, what will happen is I get this window where I can choose different sources. And so here I'm going to choose my galaxy video. Um, and I still don't see anything. Nothing's changed yet. And that's because the code that is still being shown was the code that I had before, which was uh, this source as zero dot out. Um, so now in order to um, see, right now I'm just seeing S zero. If I want to see S one, I should change this here to S one. So now I see my video. Um, and you'll notice I have this bar because it captures the entire window. And let's say I want to see it without the bar. So I could, um, scale it like, let's say 1.2 or something. So now it's bigger. Maybe I want it even a little bit bigger. So now I'm just seeing the sky. Um, and what I could do now is use one of these blending modes with the camera. So um, here I'm doing a blend, or let's say what if I do a diff. Um, or um, a multiply. Um, and I could, let's say, oh, I want to kind of bring out the colors more, so I could saturate it. Um, and I can control how much saturation is happening. So saturate is how colorful or not colorful it is. If I put zero, there's no saturation here. Um, and now we're using, um, blending these two things together. I could also, what if I want to combine that with one of the warping effects? So I could also say, let's modulate. And I want to use the camera to modulate. So I'm going to put modulate S0. And so now um, the camera, um, basically depending on the colors of the camera, it is warping the image in a certain way. Um, and I could try 
What if I modulate using the night sky? We can see what happens. So um, I get this. I could, what happens if I make the modulation a lot more? It can have kind of unexpected effects here. Ooh, wow. Yeah, we can get. I go back to the camera, start to get some sort of glitchier things just using this modulation. Um, and that's all for, for this video. I encourage you to try, try really um, experimenting with these things and I'm also going to post uh, links to these sketches um, and really try experimenting with combining different images and kind of if you can create the sense of being in a different place. Um, I, I like the sky so here I am in the sky but um, experiment with these different the blend modes and the modulation and see um, what you can what you can come up with.